Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and if I've done my editing job properly, you should be watching me in black and white right now. You will already know from the thumbnail, the title, and you've read any of it, the description. Today is my first impression a review and tutorial on the Kaleidos Sashimi City palette, which is neutral. <laughs> so I probably should have given you a bit of warning before I said that. You, you okay down there? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I know. I occasionally throw a neutral one in just to confuse you. What can I say? It, it... To be quite honest, it's the completionist in me. Look at all the other thin ones that they did. I had to have this one too. But do I like it? Does it perform well? Would I recommend it? What does this look like in glorious Technicolor? All these things and more. You can only find out by continuing to watch. But you do have the best seat in the house. And as confirmed by Sammy the Sloth Straw, he agrees with me when I say, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back. Okay, I would have shown you this in the intro. This is the um, the second of the most recent thin six pan palettes that Kaleidos have brought out. This is Sashimi City. Um, I have already filmed with the Luna Lavender. That film is live. The other five that were like this had boxes that opened from the top. These ones are actually die cut to the shape of the pattern. Hold it up against my wall, you can probably see that a bit easier. Um, and actually open up casket form. And then the side opens, the flaps fold out, and this, this actually folds out completely flat, as you can see. That same design is repeated on the box. As you can see. And this is what she looks like. I know, very neutral for me, most what you were not expecting. But this was kind of the completionist in me, I have to admit. Um, normally I wouldn't even have given this a second glance but I've got all of the other thin palettes including the ones that they've discontinued now um, and I just thought I know I'm going to kick myself if I don't have the complete set because the only one of their palettes that I've not got, I've got all of the slim palettes palettes and I've got the escape pod palette. The only one I've not got is their deep sea luster palette. So if anybody's got that and is happy to part with it please let me know. Be happy to uh, take that off your hands. Um, right as always I actually stick because I don't use the little mirrors that are in this. I actually stick 
little plastic thing to the mirror so that I always know which shade I am talking about. So starting from, let's start from along here. We've got Soy Sauce, Salmon Skyline, Pink Ginger, Gourmet, Penthouse and a Promenade. So, and that pink ginger, I don't know how, I don't know whether I can show it off with a mirror maybe, but it is actually, it has a gold to pink shift, can you see that? And Penthouse is the other shimmer. As you can see, very, very shiny. Now, with the Luna Lavender, to me, the Duochrome performed a lot differently to how their previous shimmers had performed. So it will be interesting to see whether, with a more neutral shade which generally are easier to create whether that is going to be true to form with these as well or if these will apply like the old shimmers did but the only way to establish this is to bung some on my face well my eyelids anyway this is still a teaching channel she's just trying to get a bit of fluff off of one of her brushes um, so because of that and because of my chronic pain I go at a speed that everyone can keep up with and I don't cut any of the blending out unless I'm doing a cut crease in which case I'll show you one in real time and then speed the other one up otherwise the films go on for way too long um, I also zoom right in close so it's just my eyes on screen. Number of reasons for this. Mainly you can't see when I'm pulling faces from pain, so it wouldn't be distracting you. Um, but also because if you're watching me on a phone screen and you're trying to follow along with me and you normally wear glasses, you've taken your glasses off to apply makeup. So I always make sure I'm zoomed right in close, it's just my eyes on screen so you can really see what's going on. Now, a lot of people with deep set eyes mistakenly believe or are mistakenly informed that they have hooded lids. I even see big beauty gurus on YouTube saying the same thing. It's understandable in a way because the way that... Um, the eyeshadow wears through the day on those types of eyes is very similar but to get the most longevity from your look and to get it looking as good as possible for as long as possible you do need to apply them slightly differently so I'm going to insert a clip in just a moment it will just be my eyes on screen where I talk you through how to determine which type of eyelid you have and the work around for each type of eye. Once that is done I'll be back to play with this and this pose looks so wrong. You should clip. Now um, my eyes have this primer on it this is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crime Pebble Primer is because it's... It goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. 
so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid if I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter even with glitter glue I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't so they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So. I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using just sit back relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, so normally these are like Normally I know exactly what I'm going to do with the colour story, but oh, you can really see the pink in that gold nail, look at that. See that shift? Isn't that pretty? Um, but I kind of don't really know what I want to do. So, instead of doing lightest to darkest, I'm going to do darkest to lightest. So I'm going to start off with soy sauce on a little brush like this. Always hold it at the end and if you've got a long enough uh, brush handle, rest the end of it against your palm. Gives you a bit more stability at this end. I'm going to do the Viennese Waltz of Blending which is natural turns towards the nose 
a fleckle when we get there and reverse turns to come back again rather than just the plain windshield wiper I do sometimes include that but I still mix it in with the Viennese waltz because I'm 46 years old I've lost over 12 stone that's over 200 pounds skin on my eyelids moves so to stop that tiger striping to stop that barcoding where your lid is folded over and it's skipped the shadow your Viennese waltz is your best friend and unlike the actual Viennese waltz, you don't go dizzy and fall over when you're doing it. So, I'm going to dip into this soy sauce shade. And just tap off. As always, there's a fair amount of kick up with these Kaleidos shadows. But it does mean that you do get pigment up onto your brush. Um, I always tap off well because historically their mattes are very, very highly pigmented. And I would rather start slowly and build up the colour. So I'm going to start off just, at, just above the edge of my natural crease. So if you're having to move your crease, this is where you now follow your new crease line. And I'm just going to run this along. Just drag it down that last little bit and then bring these walks myself back up again. And you can see that was just one dip. Yes, it's looking patchy, but that's because I haven't built the colour up yet because I tapped off so much. So let's build this colour up. As I said, it's it's rare for me to grab a more neutral palette. Normally, if I grab a neutral palette, it's something like um, September Rose Brew, which has got yellows and oranges and um, sort of tea leaf green shades in it, rather than just the straight neutral browns, which is well. <laughs> One of these says it's called Salmon Skyline, so whether it's got a pinky base to it, I don't know. With that duochrome, it's possible, I suppose. I'm just building this colour up through the crease, getting a bit of patchiness here, but that could be my eyelid, because I do get dry patches just here. And up here both sides so what I'm going to do I'm going to pull some of this colour down onto the edge of the mobile lid and just I'm going to grab a slightly fluffier brush that hasn't got any any um, powder on it this is one of my oh my glitter, sadly they don't exist anymore. I'm just going to use this to buff over the area that was looking a bit patchy. Because sometimes you can find that if you go over um, a colour that's looking a bit patchy with a fluffier brush, you can get... A better result and um, you get more blown out edges as well which is, is really pretty. So I'm just going to continue to and you can see it also takes any excess pigment off as well. See so now in my mirror this is not looking patchy but in my viewfinder, it is looking a bit patchy here. If it is patchy in real life for you, once you're happy with how the edges are blended out, just dip the tip of the bristles. I don't know if you can see there. We'll concentrate on the brush. There we go. Just dip the tip of the bristles into the colour 
and then to build the colour up we're just going to tap onto the areas that were looking lighter and patchier just to build that colour up. See that really surprises me because I didn't wear makeup yesterday so it's not that my skin is reacting to wearing makeup every day which it does do sometimes if I wear makeup too frequently it does tend to dry out on my eyelids um, which is why I've kind of gone back to f having at least one day after filming where I just edit rather than um, I used to sort of film three days in a row and then edit for three days in a row and have a day off um, I now try and film, edit, film, edit, film, edit just to give my skin a bit of a break but um, it's really unusual that a neutral colour is behaving like this because browns are the easiest colours to create if this was a green or a blue or a purple or a red I'd be like well yeah they're difficult colours to create blah 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 browns are not difficult colours to create they shouldn't be giving me this much trouble and previous Kaleidos browns like right, they've got browns in cyber bronze they've got a brown in they've got a brown in the pink one I think they have actually but you know they've got a few browns in their other thin palettes that behave much better than this. I mean this is really this is really surprising to me that I'm having to work this hard with a neutral colour. It feels like they've changed their formula on these most, the, the, the two most recent pa um, thin palettes and I don't know why I don't know whether, maybe because of Covid they've had to change supplier or maybe they're getting their pigments from somewhere else because they can't get them from where they used to but these are most definitely not as buttery as previous Kaleidos palettes have been even difficult colours like, like the greens in the sci-fi green blended out better than this brown has done which is a surprise but even though I like the brand and I love their previous palettes you know you always get the truth from me as to whether I like them or not Right, let's get a nice fluffy brush. Let's get one of my good fluffy brushes. 
Here's my Roland Langnickel. Okay. Right, Roland Langnickel are my best brushes full stop. This is the Chic Pro range and this is the Crease Brush. And I'm going to dip into Salmon Skyline. Pick that up on it and tap back off again. The reason I do each eye like this rather than do one eye and then come back and do the other eye is because, I mean, especially with fibre, I can get very, very swollen eyelids. Um, and there are times when I, ha I mean, your eyes are not symmetrical anyway. And there are times that I have to do completely different shaped um, applications in order to get them to look the same when I look forward. So right, I've got a got an errant brush here and it is annoying me. There we go, I wanted to get rid of it. Right, so let's try this Salmon Skyline. Now if you're going to blend two colours together it's always best, I still can't go over how patchy that looks on camera, it's always best to overlap the first colour that you're blending with, with the bare skin rather than applying it here and then trying to come down and blend. I don't know why, it just, that to me seems to give a much nicer blend um, and you're less likely to get a harsh line where the two colours blending together so yeah see this colour is going on absolutely fine maybe it is just my eye being awkward today Taking this about halfway along, and then I'm going to use Gourmet, the other light matte, to do the inner part because I want to try and use as many of the pigments as I can. How's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. And if it hasn't, and I hope sincerely that tomorrow is a better one for you. And if you're at the start of your day, having breakfast or just stopping for a quick cuppa, Mid morning and having a cheeky 10 minute YouTube watch. I hope your day turns out to be as fabulous as you are, darling. Yep, okay, I'm happy with that. Just going to clean the brush off on clean washcloth. I don't use colour switches anymore, they're far too harsh on your brushes, especially natural hair brushes. I mean, these are synthetic, but they will shred your natural brushes. Right, so the Salmon Skyline does seem to have like a pinkish tint to it. Gourmet is more of a a mustardy undertone. 
so this may or may not work so again overlapping with the deeper brown and overlapping with the pink brown to start this blend off Those of you following my dentist saga, um, in the UK we have NHS and then we have private dentists. And NHS have set prices they can charge you per what you're having done. So like level one is your check up, which includes things like um, a scale and polish and x-rays and stuff and the next level is um, fillings and extractions and the next level after that is things like crowns and false teeth and if you need three fillings you should only pay the one set fee which I think is about 66 quid or if you need one filling you pay 66 quid it's a set price for that particular level So, but private prices are like fillings start from a hundred quid. I feel, depending on how big it is and whether you go for a white filling or a mercury amalgam filling. So there's a, a hell of a difference in terms of pricing. I mean, the checkup I think is something like sixteen quid on the NHS. It's fifty-seven private, just for them to have a look in your mouth and tell you what they're doing. Yeah, um, and unfortunately I didn't have an NHS dentist, my dentist went all private before the first lockdown in the UK and uh, I'd been trying to find another one which is like trying to pull hen's teeth you have to go on like a waiting list that are usually like 18 months or 2 years long Basically, you have to wait for someone to die or leave, move out of the area and leave the practice uh, before you can get an NHS dentist. It's quite literally dead men's boots. So, then we had the first lockdown when dentists weren't allowed to do anything at all, no matter how bad your teeth were. You, they, they, no, you can do anything. I'm going to use a flat brush and as always never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush once I've applied the pigment to the brush I'll then be wetting it with this this is Makeup Obsession Fix Fit Makeup Fixing Spray um, see given how the duochrome behaved in the lavender one I'm tempted to put glitter glue on but I want to see whether this is the same no I'm not going to put glitter glue I'm going to treat this like I would do normally because when I first try a palette I don't do cut grease and I don't do glitter glue because I want to see how well the pigments perform uh, you can use anything to wet the brush after you've applied the pigment moisturising spray like MAC or Mario Badescu fixing spray, priming spray, finishing spray you can even save an empty bottle, fill it up with fresh water each time and use that. Um, but once you've sprayed your ferrule here will be wet so just pop it into your knuckles and spin and that will prevent moisture getting down and loosening the bristles. Right. I'm going to start off by going into Penthouse which is the lighter of the two shimmers. So yeah, 
so once the lockdown finished I'm then ringing around again and because during the lockdown I had a filling fall out each side of my mouth right at the start of the lockdown in April by the time they lifted it is what was it August September the side of both of those teeth where I'd obviously had to continue eating on it because I'd got one each side so one day I'd chew one side and the other day I'd chew the other side in the hope to you know damage them as little as possible um, they'd, the side of the tooth had snapped off and the one on this side here had formed an abscess. I literally looked like a bloody hamster. Okay, that went on with remarkable ease. So I'm drying the brush off, reloading it, and doing the same thing with the other eye, wetting it, drying the ferrule, and applying it. It was the chewer chrome that I had problems with, with the lavender one, so let's see if I have problems with the duochrome in just a moment when I apply the second shade here. So I was ringing all these NHS dentists saying look I'm in absolute agony, is there anything you can do? Um, because of my deep creasing I've got here I do have to gently stretch this lid out uh, don't do this unless you absolutely have to or you will cause damage but that's from where my eye was pulled around when I was a kid but you can see I only pull it out as far enough as to straighten the creasing and then I gently put it back again right um, yeah absolutely none of them were being helpful they were all saying well we can see you as a private patient I'm like, no, I can't afford to be a private patient. I'm disabled. I only get disabled benefit money. I'm not a bloody, you know. I couldn't afford to go private with my dentist when I did work. Right, well, I'm now going to go into Pink Ginger, the duochrome, and see how that behaves. So, I ended up emailing NHS and complained and they wrote back saying you should be able to ring any NHS dentist and ask for a triple A triage which is advice, analgesia and action analgesia of course being pain relief So I rang back the dentist geographically closest to my house who had said no there was nothing they could do NHS wise they were one of the ones that had said this that I had to go private and uh, lo and behold when I asked for a triple A triage I got a phone call back the same day I spoke to a very nice dentist who said I'll do you a prescription so she did me a prescription for the um, abscess okay that actually went on without any problem at all so this doesn't have the same issue as the lavender palette that's interesting So, she said, right, take that course, give it a few days, make sure the abscess doesn't come back, then ring us, make an appointment, and we'll either fill or pull the teeth, depending on you know, what we feel is appropriate. If the tooth can't be saved, we'll pull it. Yep, fine, perfect. 
So I took these antibiotics and my face started to go down. And uh, gave it a few more days. Didn't seem to be puffing back up again. The gum was still a bit swollen, but I just put that down to being irritated from, you know, food getting into the actual socket there. When I was eating, so I made the appointment, went back in, and they said, oh, it's 57 quid, and I thought, oh, that must be the emergency appointment cost then. Okay, fair enough. Still not realising that they were actually charging me private prices. And they took all the x-rays and everything and said, no, the abscess is still there. It hasn't all gone. I'll need to do another prescription. I'm like, okay, thinking, right, it's going to be a NHS one like it was before. No, it was a private prescription. Now, I've actually got... Um, a prepayment card because if you have a lot of medication prescribed to you, which obviously I do, you can do a prepayment card. So then you, you pay a set amount every quarter and that covers all your prescriptions. Well, great, perfect, that's exactly. It doesn't cover private prescriptions. So that was another tenner, so that's now 67 quid it's cost. This is a pad with my cellar water. I'm just going to go and tidy up any fallout and just sharpen the edge up on the outside here. I don't like using tape because if it's sticky enough to stop um, powder getting underneath it, it's sticky enough to pull your skin too much. So, and I got an email through from them with a quote for the work that I needed doing. It was like 300 quid, so I ran back and I'm like, uh, NHS? And she went, no, 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 you had your first NHS treatment, which was the first prescription. Everything else from there on is going to be private. What? What? Excuse me? Um, <clears throat> Thankfully a friend of mine had exactly the same antibiotics, I'm not going to mention their name because I'm not going to get them into trouble, um, where she'd been prescribed them but couldn't actually swallow capsules, had to have liquid. So she just gave me hers that were still in date, they were exactly the same strength, exactly the same prescription. Because I could, I can still feel a little bit of a lump just here on the jaw, so... I shall take that and then I shall ring round some more dentists and ask for a triple A <laughs> triage in the hope I can actually get the bloody work done on NHS prices. Otherwise I'm just going to have to join a queue and just hope I don't get an abscess again between now and whenever I get a dentist. Happy days. Right. Okay, that duochrome actually went on without any problems at all. So I definitely need to try the Lunar Lavender one again um, and just work out whether it's the brush I was using. But the thing is I tried a brush and I tried a silicon brush and then I used my finger. So I think I'll, I'll try it again using glitter glue and see if that makes a difference. Anyway. I'm going to pause you now, my darlings, while I go and pop some base products on. And uh, I will be back to finish this eye look off with you now. For me, there's going to be a little while. I'm going to go back to watching Butte Bean doing her declutter while I do this. For you, my darlings, after this wibbly bit, it will be absolutely instant. Okay. I am back. Right, I did normal brows for once with a brow pencil. I know. Who am I? For those of you who don't usually watch me, normally I'm a soap brow girl with a wacky coloured powder to match my eyeshadow. So. 
for me to use a normal coloured braille pencil is um, it's unusual to say the least. Right, I'm going with this flat topped brush and I'm going to go into Promenade which is the only other shade I haven't used yet in this palette and it's the more neutral of the deeper browns. I'm going to pop that along the lower lash line I like micro brow pencils, my goodness I go through them quickly. Does anybody else find that? Are they just like really really soft? Or am I just really heavy handed with mine? I just feel like they don't last that long you know. Weird. Weird, 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 weird. Right. This is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, flat topped and chunky. Great for getting underneath your lower lashes and buffing things out. Um, you can use any dense smudger brush though to do that with. I'm going to Gourmet which is the lighter one that we used here. And I'm just going to use that to smudge and buff out that lower lash line a bit. Just to soften it and add a wee bit of extra interest. Yes, I always flinch this side. Being blind in this side, I don't have any peripheral vision, so I'm relying on a viewfinder an awful long way off when uh, I haven't got contact lenses in. Or contact lens in, I should say. And a number of times I poke myself in the eye. You would not believe me, you probably would believe. So I'm such a bloody klutz. Right. I am going to grab, I have not used this one for ages. This is, it was one of the Wet n Wild Halloween highlighters from a while ago. It's the loose one, and its shade is Moon Tears. And this is just a cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay yonks ago. I'm going to pop some of this just up under the tail of my brow. I like loose highlighters, but my goodness, they can make a mess if you're not careful. Which is why I'm just working out of the lid, rather than the actual pot. And then in a corner. And I like to bring mine round under the tear duct and just blend it into the lower lash line there. You can see this is really vibrant. And then you tend to find that with um, loose highlighters. They do tend to be more ta 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 Right my beautiful ones, I am going to pause you for one last time I'm going to chuck some more of this highlight on my face and probably mostly on my chest and my shirt through fallout, not intentional. Bung some mascara on, choose a lippy, do something with the hair and be back with my final thoughts. Again, for you, instant. Hey, okay, I am a bird. Use that highlight on my cheeks. Lovely. Mascara today is one of the ones that my friend Hedda sent me. This is the Clinique 
High Impact Mascara and the lippy is also from Hedda. It's one of my Charlotte Tilbury ones and it's shade Stoned Rose. I've got an ick right in the edge of my nose. Just look at that. So, oh, what do I think of this palette? Um, that first brown that I used did give me trouble. However, none of the others did. So it could just be that I've got a particularly dry patch on my eyelids there today that could have been affecting it. Because the rest of the colours performed brilliantly. Um, and how I expect Kaleidos to perform. Blended well with each other, minimal to no fallout. Uh, unlike with the lilac palette, the dual chrome went on without any problems at all. So um, clearly they can do a dual chrome, but apparently not in a lilac just yet. Um, but I'll keep playing with the lilac palette until I can work out the best way to use those and get the best result from them but this went on absolutely fine just as I usually do spritzing the brush after I've applied the pigment just to help minimize fallout um, both shimmers went on really nicely I really like that gold duochrome with that hit of pink it just it really pulls out the pink in the outer edge here of that brown, the, the um, what was it, salmon something, salmon skyline, the brown that's that's got that hint of pink to it, it really pulls that out, so that's really pretty. Um, you know I'm not a fan of neutrals, however, barring that first shade, with the caveat that it could have been my eyes mucking about today, I like this. Um, it is what it says, basically. Um, had I not got all of the preceding thin Kaleidos palettes, I wouldn't have picked this up. And I wouldn't have missed it. Um, I much, much prefer my September Rose Brew Palette. I do have a discount on September Rose, by the way. It's listed in the description. That's not why I'm saying that. Um, the BMM or BBM. BBM. I don't know. Um, hang on. I'll get it out of the drawer and tell you. Oh, the BMM Men in Fantasy palette. You know, I prefer that to this. Uh, but if I'm gonna, if I'm going to do a neutral look, the palette that I always reach for is this one. This is the September Rose Brew Palette. Now, when you compare the two, I'm just trying to cover the mirror and not blind you. When you compare the two, you can see this one has a lot more choice you know it's got this greeny black it's got this orange it's got this sort of khaki mustardy color this yellow the orange the russet toned one this has got a hint of mulberry behind it it's still it's it, it's still a 
basic neutral palette but it's interesting it has options it's not just brown um, so basically if you're not like me a bit of a completionist which is really wrong you shouldn't be a completionist nowadays it is wasteful because I very much doubt I'm going to use this, to be honest. Um, I may end up popping the two shimmers out and using them because one of the things that I love about these Kaleidos Thin Palettes is they are actually magnetic. They're not glued in place. So you can take them out. And to be honest, I'm most likely just to pull these two out, the, the shimmer and the duochrome, and use them separately in a different palette that I create myself from different singles than I am to actively seek out this palette to use. However, if you like it, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Lipstick on my teeth, how lovely. You could have told me. Um, Yeah, I mean, that, that pretty much sums it up, doesn't it, to be quite honest. And that's what you always get from me, honesty. Um, yeah, there we go. I hope you enjoyed that. If you're one of my 4F babies, please double check. You are still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing you. But uh, they're leaving my films in your recommended list so you don't realise you're being unsubscribed. Sneaky little buggers, ha. Huh? Once you've done that, uh, a like, a comment, a cheeky little share if you can manage it would be really helpful on the algorithm, thank you. I try and uh, spread the 4F love around so that more people can come and join in the fun. If, however, you've tripped over me some other way, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, what you see is what you get, basically. You get me blethering on at you about everything and nothing whilst applying usually coloured pigments to my face rather than neutral ones. I do throw the occasional neutral one in just to keep people on their toes. Um, if you like that, it'd be awesome if you'd like to join the 4F family. We are the nicest family on YouTube. Super easy to do. All you've got to do is hit that red subscribe button, turn it grey. Then you ring my bell. Ring my bell. And choose all notifications. Not that you are sending notifications right now. Deep joy. But, until they do, I have an awful, huge back side, yes, but back catalogue of films you could watch. Uh, I have other product reviews, other tutorials, uh, collabs, challenges, tags. I even read you my favourite poem in one of them. So if that sounds like a your kind of thing, and you need a little bit of me time. As I've said, for what feels like time in memorial now. Grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up and indulge my darling. Right then my lovelies, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.